Good morning. We are hoping to know the new president of uh, Nigeria, maybe in about a day or two. Um, Good morning. We started a discussion on export costing and pricing um, recently. Today we are on part four, and in part four we'll be discussing cost element. Cost element. Cost element. Cost element in export pricing. We discussed yesterday the cost elements like product. We discussed the cost element like um, product, um, price, uh, sorry, transport, and we talked about warehousing. So today we move on to the second part of the cost element. And we'll be talking about free forwarding. We'll be talking about the shipping line local charges. We'll be talking about free charge. We'll be talking about NXP processing fee. And we're talking about next fee, logistic fee. For those listening to us, these are being discussed from Nigerian perspective, but you can always apply it in your own area. If there are other costs that you might need to investigate that were not mentioned or discussed in my conversation. So today we'll be looking at um, free forwarder or free forwarding fee. Remember, we're looking at export costing and pricing, and the objective of this program is to educate individuals on how to go about costing their product. Uh, sorry, pricing their product. And for you to effectively price your product, you need to cost it. You need to have a full idea of all the cost elements you are going to incur in the transaction. Having a full idea of the cost element going to the transaction gives you an idea of what your pricing should be. It also gives you an idea if you are going to be profitable. Because by the time you look at all the cost, then you compare yourself with other competitors in the market. Remember, I talk about the fact that competitors are not just people selling similar products, but people selling other products that are like a substitute to yours. Substitute to yours. They are also competitors. As long as the money they will have given to you, they are giving it to someone else who is selling something that gives the same satisfaction as your product, not necessarily the same category of product. So, for example, I talk about snack. And that if you are selling plantain chips, you should know that anybody selling other, other chips like yam chips, potato chips, are competing with you. Not only those that sell plantain chips. As long as it's snack, they are both achieving the same objective. More like eating between meals. And that will be achieved with plantain chips <laughs> and with the potato chips. So, free forwarder. Who is a free forwarder? A free forwarder is an individual that helps you arrange your good for shipment to international destination. Now, let me look at it from a Nigerian perspective. A free forwarder eventually will help you to, number one, do your documentations at the port. Sometimes they can help you do your pre export documentation with the bank. But all the documentation you need to do at the port with custom, the clearance with custom, the booking of the container, the booking of the shipment, the loading of the container, the delivery of the container to the shipping line all can be handled by free forwarder. So it's all about what you want the free forwarder to do. I am of the opinion that you should be in charge of your transaction. Do not allow an agent to hold you to ransom. By the time the lifeline of your project is in the hand of a free forwarder, if he messed it up, you will bear the brunt. You might not even see him again. So the free forwarder should be handling only things that you will not be able to handle as a result of his own profession. For example, clearing with custom. 
Joseph Opemio Lavi, thank you very much. Hi, it's Australia this morning. <laughs> thank you. We are voting in Nigeria today, so I'm sure you will know your new president very soon. Maybe tomorrow or next tomorrow. <laughs> thank you very much for joining. So I was talking about the fact that a free forwarder should help you. He can do a lot for you. But look, if you are doing a project and you are putting a lot of money into it, you need to be in charge of that project. You need to be in charge of the project. You cannot afford to leave the lifeline of your business in the hand of an agent who can mess you up and eventually you will bear the brunt of him messing you up. So why do you, you allow that? So as much as possible, if you are engaging a forwarding agent to do an export transaction for you, that forwarding agent should only be doing things you cannot do. Things like what? Things like interfacing with custom. Applying to custom for the clearance of that goods. Interfacing with the uh, other government agencies at the port. Things that will require an agent to do. So, for example, things like processing the pre export documentation. You can do that or your staff. Putting it together and giving it to bank. You can do that. We're going to discuss documentation later on. But you can do that and your staff. So there's no reason why you should allow, leave the lifeline of your business, the lifeline of your project in the hand of an agent. That is very, very unwise. You know why? If you leave the lifeline of your project in the hand of an agent, when the agent make a mistake, goofed, and it's costing money to fix it, you are going to fix it. So why don't you restrict and limit what's in his hand? More importantly, that save you cost. That save you cost. That is saving you cost. So because it's saving you cost, that's the more reason why you should not allow him to do what you could do yourself. Remember, a free forwarder is the one that helps you arrange your good for international destination. So apart from custom clearance, which I think, I believe is the core job of a clearing agent, apart from the custom clearance, which I believe is the core job of a clearing agent, a clearing agent can also go beyond the core job to do other associate job, like doing your pre export documentation, like paying your next fees, like doing booking with the shipping line, like doing the container booking, like loading the containers, like transporting the container to the port, like delivering the container to the shipping line. But do you know what? You can do this yourself. You can do this yourself. Ade Wale, Ade Sheon, thank you very much for joining. Good morning. I hope you have voted. <laughs> because voting has started. So we need to be a good citizen of this country. If you are in Nigeria, you are listening to me, please go and vote. We'll be through in 30 minutes, so please go and vote. Ade Sheon, Ade Wale, I know you are very particular about pricing and costing. So we started this, and this is part four. So if you have missed any of the session, just go to my timeline on Facebook so you'll be able to pick up the previous session of the export pro, uh, costing and pricing. Export costing and pricing. All right. So we're discussing, we discussed some part of the costing and pricing yesterday. We discussed product costs, we discussed transport costs, we discussed warehousing costs, we discussed uh, transport to the warehouse, transport to the port. Today we are looking at the freight forwarder's fee and other costs like the shipping line charges. And I was talking about that, the fact that the freight forwarder's fee, that a freight forwarder is someone that arranged good for international destination, and that a freight forwarder should help you, can help you rather, from the beginning, as soon as the good is ready, can handle everything for you from beginning to the end, after the good is ready. But I am of the opinion that that is unwise for your business. That is unwise for your business. That is unwise for your business because... If you allow an agent to be in charge of your transaction from beginning to the end, if he messed up the transaction, you are the one that will pay the price. So that's the essence of actually doing this program, for you to learn how to go about it. So the first thing is you do your pre export documentation. When we discover it, we'll be discussing that in detail. But that is delivering documents to the bank, applying to federal government through the bank that you want to export your product in Nigeria. After that, payment of next fee is done. After that, you can then book the container. After that, 
you can also book, so you can book the shipment. So you can also book the container. You need to book the shipment for the you must know your shipping and detail of your shipment. Then they give container to you. Then the container is loaded and moved to the location where you want to load. The good is loaded to the container and brought back to the port. Your, your agent, which is forwarding agent now, is the one that will clear it for export. And he's going to do a couple of stuff with customs and other agents at the port. Some of those things require a technical expertise of an agent. Some of them require even the ID number of that agent with custom. Some of them are, you can't do it as an exporter, but some of them you can do it. But whatever the case is, these forwarding agents are in the good for shipment and handling destination. Now, when they are in the food good for shipment and handling destination, nice one, boss. Filling your advice on export costing and pricing. Oluwa Sheye Oluwa Thank you very much for joining. Good morning. And welcome. So, um, if it's great and you're good for shipment to handle destination, you should ensure that you are able to undo some of this transaction yourself. So the essence of this training, of this same um, session every day, is actually to be able to educate you. So we do Facebook Live every day import export platform but we're focusing for 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 the next six months we'll probably be focusing only on export because we want to really contribute a lot to export but if we have people asking a question on import we might be able to take import along the line but one of our primary objective is actually export and then of course import on the side afterwards and if that becomes necessary if there are requests for that we'll consider that but the focus is on export so most of the thing you'll be learning in this session is supposed to be able to help you to do those things yourself and i'm also available on facebook messenger or at other time, you can actually chat me to ask questions after the session or even in the course of the session. So you can have clarification. So you can do these things yourself. So you can do these things yourself. If you are in Evans, thank you very much for joining. Good morning and welcome. So the agent cleared the good for shipment and hand destination and eventually delivers some documents to you. But he's charging you a cost. Is charging you a cost. The cost the agent is charging you is usually per container or per kg, depending on the shipment. For Nigeria, if you are shipping through the air, they will charge you per kg. If you are shipping by sea, they will charge you per container. So in Nigeria, it can be as much as hundred dollar equivalent. Or max one hundred and fifty dollar equivalent. That's about fifty thousand naira plus. Max to do that activity for you. But now, if you are now having to give them more containers, of course you should be thinking of negotiating that price. But let me say something about forwarders, so that you can minimize your cost, so you won't be paying for stuff twice. You need to know what the forwarder is supposed to do for you. And one of the things the forwarder, in fact, in hiring the forwarder, you should ask questions. Idaosa Abu, thank you very much for joining. Good morning. You should ask questions. Now, the question you are asking this forwarder is, you want to be able to know that he knows exactly what he will be doing. Why? There are a number of them that don't know exactly what they want to do. So they just mess you up. So you don't want to give your job to someone who doesn't know exactly what he should be doing. They are supposed to bring some document for you after shipment. That's part of the job. So they bring for you a bill of lading or airway bill, depending on the nature, where, if you're shipping by air or by sea. But they also bring for you, in the case of Nigeria now, what we call the exchange control document or post-export clearance document. So I'm paying this agent 70% of his fee so that when he brings the exchange control document like the endorsed NXP, Essay control document like the clean certificate of inspection. Essay control document like the single good declaration from, from custom. Those documents are evidence that I have legally exported my goods. And those documents will form the basis for paying me his balance. So that you don't just incur unnecessary costs. Then you, you, you pay this exporter. You know, we are discussing export costing and pricing. We are also discussing how to manage that cost. Not just telling you what the costing are. How do you manage the cost? Like we did on product yesterday. Like we did on transport yesterday. How you can manage your cost on transport. And then we are doing the same now on, on, um, on um, forwarding. Forwarding fee. Forwarding fee. Forwarding fee. Forwarding fee. 
So you need to know exactly what the forwarder is supposed to be doing for you. That's extremely important. If you don't know exactly what the forwarder is supposed to be doing for you, then they will charge you a fee, then you won't get value for the payment you have made. So you need to ask them questions to be sure they know exactly what they should be doing for you. You need to ask them questions to be sure they know exactly what they should be doing for you. Asking them that question is extremely important. Asking them that question is extremely critical so that at the end of the day, you don't waste money giving them money to do it and they didn't do it and you have to go and do it yourself eventually. Then we have the shipping line local charges. Shipping line local charges. Shipping line local charges. Now, these charges from the shipping line, number one, include their, their local charges. Now, it's not the offshore charges. We're going to come to the offshore charges eventually. These are local charges. And by local charges, I mean that by giving, by, by shipping line giving you that container, the shipping line issuing you a bill of lading, the shipping line uh, processing your transaction for shipment, they charge a fee. Now, in addition to the shipping and local charges, that's what is called the terminal handling charge. If the shipping line is the one that owns the terminal, it's going to charge you the terminal handling charge. This was recently introduced in Nigeria less than two or three years ago. The terminal handling charge. The terminal handling charge has to do with the moving of your container up and down. Weighing the container, loading it, unloading it into the vessel, terminal handling charge. This terminal handling charge is charged by the terminal where the container is, is going to be. Uh, the terminal where the container where you drop the container before eventually it goes on the ship. They have to stack the container, move the container, but just know that the terminal charges a fee. But the shipping line also charges you a fee. These two fees can go to the same shipping line if the shipping line is the owner of that terminal. This fee, in my opinion, also can be negotiated. You know, look, almost everything can be negotiated, really. It's all about the, the volume you are doing, the relationship you have built, and what the the shipping line is seen in you in terms of the value you are going to be adding to their business and the way you communicate it to them. All this will contribute to what kind of discount they want to give you so that you can reduce your cost. The more you can negotiate all these prices around, the better they are for you. Because remember, you are trading with other parts of the world who are very, very efficient. Good road. Light, uh, rail. But you have an advantage. The raw material for your product is sourced in Nigeria. Labor here is cheaper. So we can still compete with them. But if you don't manage your cost effectively, you will not be able to compete with them. Enoch, Edu Kolem, thank you very much for joining. Good morning and welcome. So, the shipping line local charges, then the freight charge. Sorry, the, the terminal handling charge. Then we have the freight charge. Now, if the shipping line is owner of the terminal, the shipping line will charge you the local charges, will charge you the terminal handling charge and the freight charge. Freight charge, by the way, is the cost of transporting the good to the final destination. The cost of transporting the good to final destination. This also can be negotiated. Shipping line can be very flexible. All they are looking at, they will ask you, how many boxes are you moving? Boxes means containers. <laughs> how many boxes are you moving? The number of boxes you are moving significantly affects how much they perceive that you are going to add to them in terms of value, and that affects the pricing you get from them. That affects the pricing you get from them. That affects the pricing you get from them. So you can also negotiate this one. In fact, you can even avoid this one completely, depending on your inco terms. One of the things we are going to be discussing under this export costing and pricing is inco terms. Inco terms. 
I'm going to be going through the incotems, and I'm going to be telling you how each of the incotems is contributing to your costing, and how eventually it consequently affects your pricing. So incotem, but if your incotem does not allow for freight charge, you can avoid that charge. You can avoid that charge. You can avoid that charge. So if I'm doing an incotem called FOB free on board, I won't have to pay your freight as an exporter. That means I, I reduce the cost of doing this business. And that's very important. So we have the shipping line local charges, the terminal handling charge, and the freight charge. Like I said, the shipping line is the one that charges the shipping line local charges. The shipping line is the one that charges the freight charge. But the terminal handling charge is charged by the terminal operator. So whenever the shipping line is also the one operating that terminal, the shipping line is also the one paid that fee. Some costs can still come up here that I have not mentioned. And it is called demorage. Demorage charge. Demorage is the cost you are paying for inefficiency. Demorage is the cost you are paying for inefficiency. This is called the export demorage. Because there is an import demorage. Export container demorage, import container demorage. Like I said, demorage is the cost an importer or exporter is paying for inefficiencies. That inefficiency can be his own inefficiency. That inefficiency can be his own agent inefficiency. That inefficiency can be the uh, shipping lines inefficiency. But the exporter who owns the goods bear the cost. Now you can see the reason why I was talking about your agent that you need to be sure your agent can handle this. Your agent know exactly what to do and how to go about it so that the agent will not be the one incurring cost. Sorry, the agent will not be the one causing the problem and you are the one incurring the cost. The agent will not be the one the problem and you are the one incurring the cost. You want to avoid that as much as possible. Peter Emeniki, thank you very much. Oh, sorry, Peter Omeiki, rather. Thank you very much for joining. Good morning and welcome. Don't forget to vote today. We need to know our president by Monday or Tuesday. Please don't forget to vote today. If you don't have PVC, okay. They've said you can't vote without PVC, so. <laughs> All right. Now, what is demorage? Demorage is the fee paid for the usage of container beyond the free period while the container is in the custody of the shipping line. Demorage is the fee paid for the usage of container beyond the free period while the container is in the custody of the shipping line. Either you are importing or either you are exporting, you can incur demorage. How do you incur demorage as an exporter? As an exporter, you have left the life of your transaction in the hand of your agent. Or you yourself have not learned enough. I mean, a lot of people will not have an excuse now. We charge a lot for this training, but we decide to bring it out in the open free of charge so that we can contribute our own quota. You know, currently we're also doing free training for banks. And someone asked me, Dele, is this CSR? And I say, yes, it's CSR. We're doing free training for banks on how they can mobilize deposit. And for those bankers who are struggling to generate deposit, that trade skill can help them generate deposit. And we're also doing this as CSR online from 3 Impact Trade Academy Import Export uh, Helpline, sorry, Import Export um, Platform, Facebook Live. But the whole idea is so that people will not have excuse and make unnecessary mistakes and then do export once and run away. Because the mortality rate of export business is very high. Why? Because people make a lot of mistakes. Why? Because people don't think they need to learn to do a particular business. I don't get it. I don't get it. That someone wants to invest millions of naira into a business, it doesn't see it necessary for him to learn about the business, to incur money to learn. Now the training is done for free on Facebook. So if that person is searching for information, most likely will stumble on this on, on Facebook or on Instagram. He's, if, he's not, if he is not able to find it, then he never search for the information. Now, the inefficiency of the exporter will make him to incur demorage. Remember, demorage is the fee paid 
for the usage of container beyond the free period while the container is in the custody of the shipping line. So, my good has been loaded into the container. The container has been transported to the terminal, waiting for the ship, but they will not load it until I fully cleared it and custom have said they can load it because ship and custom send loading list to shipping line. So shipping line cannot just load any container. Custom must have cleared that good for export. For custom to clear for export, the agent must do all his documentation and pay all the necessary fees to government. You don't pay export duty in Nigeria, but you still to pay some fee, like the next fees. And that's the only fee, really. And of course, you pay the agency at the port. I'm not talking about the legal illegal fees that custom and other agents at the port collect from agent. They call it facilitation fee. They call it all sorts of names. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the legal fees to be paid. The reason why you are paying forwarding fee to forwarder is because they, they actually set to a lot of agency who will sign off on their clearance. But let's come back to the real discussion. If the agent I have engaged is not serious, not competent, get carried away with other transaction, left my transaction and attended to, and for that reason, the custom did not clear my good for export and send my containers or as part of the loading list for a particular vessel, I have chosen vessel A. This vessel is called vessel, vessel 3 Timpex. <laughs> That's the name of the vessel. This vessel is coming in on the... On the te, today is um, 23. This vessel is coming in on the 23rd. Now, the vessel, sorry, the vessel is coming in on the 21st. Let's say yesterday, 21st. Sorry, 22nd, yesterday, Friday. He will load Friday, Saturday, Sunday. By Monday, he's leaving. No work done in the weekend. He, but he will load. If my agent does not finish my clearance before that, and the loading list does not get to the shipping line, I think about 24 or 48 hours before that vessel arrive, they will not load my good on that vessel. I've paid the agent. I've given him all he needs in terms of documents, but because of his own inefficiency, I will not be able to. The system also can cause this delay, like the issue on Apapa Road, the road to Apapa, the truck queuing up. If there is delay, such that my truck is spending days, even though the agent has finished the documentation, the list is with, with the shipping line to load, but my container has not entered the terminal, the port. It won't be loaded. Now, if I miss that vessel, they will start counting demory for me. The demorage is the fee paid for the usage of that container beyond the free period while that container is in the custody of the shipping line. As a result of my incompetence, negligence, my agent incompetence, negligence, or the incompetence or negligence or, or on the part of the shipping line. You'll be amazed. Sometimes the shipping line cause this problem and the exporter have to pay that demorage. Although the exporter have access to the Nigerian Shippers Council, who they can report to and recover that cost. But you need to pay so that your good can leave, but you can recover the cost from them. What am I trying to say? That costing is a, is a big, big, big challenge for many. And most of the extra cost people incur are mainly as a result of inadequate knowledge. Inadequate knowledge of the fact that they can actually avoid some of those costs. They can avoid some of those costs, but they don't know they can avoid some of those costs. So, because of the delay on the part of the exporter, or on the part of his agent, or on the part of the government who, who created a system that is grossly inefficient, I'm hoping the incoming government, either if it's the old that is coming or the new one, will be able to fix that problem. Whoever it is that win, we'll be, I'm hoping, we'll, we'll keep putting up the pressure and talking about it, so that they can fix it. Because we can't grow this economy if we are not taking trade very seriously. We can't really grow our GDP because we need to increase our output. To increase our output, then we will have a place we are selling it to. If we are not selling it outside, we can't increase our output. 
because we will saturate the local market. So we must increase our output, but to increase our output, we must create market outside. And to create market outside, we must encourage people to want to export by creating an enabling environment for export. But today in Nigeria, the environment for trade, both import and export, is horrible. 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 But that will not deter people from exporting. People are still able to export for their own business and, of course, for the love of the country. So today we have looked at this part two of export cost element, but this part four of export pricing and costing. We have looked at shipping line local charges. We have looked at freight charges. We have looked at terminal handling charge. We have looked at another charge that is not a, it's not a charge that is statutory that will usually happen, but it's a charge that is payment for inefficiencies. Payment for inefficiencies. And that is the demorage. Demorage. Now, please, let me talk a little bit also about detention. Demorage and detention are, are, are used interchangeably, but they are different. Demorage is the fee paid for the user of container beyond the free period while the container is in the custody of the shipping line before you ship. You miss that vessel because of inefficiencies and you could not ship on that vessel, so you are being, you are being charged extra per day, per container, for keeping your goods and not shipping it. Now, when you move the container out of the shipping line terminal, you take it to your own location to go and load. They give you a number of days, three days to five days, sometimes max seven days, depending on the distance, for you to come back. If you are not able to return the container on time to the terminal, they charge you detention fee. What is detention? Detention is the fee paid for the usage of container beyond the free period while the container is in the custody of the exporter or the importer if it's an import transaction. The fee paid for the usage of container beyond the free period while the container is in the custody of the importer. The fee paid of the exporter the fee paid for the usage of container beyond the free period while the container is in the custody of the exporter. Detention is the fee paid for the usage of container beyond the free period while the container is in the custody of the exporter. So, detention and demolage are costs that people incur in export transactions that can be avoided. They are not supposed to be part of the cost. But there are, there are costs being paid for inefficiencies on your part as an exporter, on the part of your agent as an exporter, on the part of the government that creates an efficient system, or on the part of the shipping line. But all the costs eventually come to the exporter. And all this increases your cost and eventually make your export pricing to be very high. Thank you very much for listening again today. I need to go and vote. <laughs> My name remains Delia Imibo, and this is Import Export Platform Facebook Live from Treat Invest Trade Academy. See you in the evening today by 7 p.m. to continue the discussion. Export costing and pricing. And we'll be looking at part five. Have a great day. And see you in the evening.